So I have my big lump of clay, which I'm going to be cutting down into smaller pieces, which is what you'll have in your kit. We also have a water cup, so we're going to need to fill that up with some water, just maybe like a quarter way up. You do not need a lot of water. We have our sponge and our kebab stick. Now kebab sticks we usually cook with, but we're actually going to be using the pointy end a little bit later today. So. I need to cut my clay into sections and I have my wire. And we're going to be using air dry clay. So sometimes when you use clay, it might have to get cooked in a kiln. And a kiln is like an oven for clay. And it gets as hot as a volcano, which is crazy. So it's got to be so, so hot. Our air dry clay, all we have to do is we get to work with it and create something and then we're going to leave it out in the air and the air will let it dry so does anybody know what clay is so clay is mud a really sticky type of mud and clay comes from the ground deep deep in the ground below the dirt you can find clay especially in certain areas of the world so we are going to start to just kind of feel our clay, move it around a little bit. You can squeeze it, you can roll it. All right. I'm gonna use a piece of clay that's about as big as my hand, as big as my fist. You can roll it in there nicely. So now the first thing that we need to do with our clump of clay is we need to make it into a sphere. And a sphere is a ball. So you think about a three-dimensional circle. So we're gonna take our clay and we're gonna to start to roll it in our hands. If you want to roll it on your mat, take everything off your mat because your mat will roll a little bit. And we're just gonna keep doing this for a little while, rolling it back and forth until you feel like your ball is a good shape. All right, so we have our sphere. And now we need to get some water for our cup, so I'll be right back. So when we use our water, and remember I said just a quarter way, this is almost more of half, but you can even do less than this. We do not need a lot of water. So when we use a pencil, we use the backside, the eraser, to erase a mistake we made. With the clay, you'll see that some of you might have some cracks in yours, some little, can you see those? We need to erase those. So what we're gonna do is you can either grab two fingers, just put your two fingers up, you can dip it in the water, and then you're just gonna gently rub and we only want to use a little bit of water. If you use too much water, your clay is going to get really sticky, too sticky, and we won't be able to work with it anymore. So we need to be so careful about how much water we're using. You can also use your sponge. If you use your sponge, you're going to want to squeeze all that water out before we put it on. If your sponge is too wet, it's going to make our clay too wet and then it's going to be too difficult to work with. We won't be able to work with our clay anymore if it gets too wet. And you can see all of those lines starting to disappear and my sphere is starting to smooth out a little bit. All right, and once you feel like all of those lines are gone, you've erased them all, we're going to put our sphere down. And then I want everybody to put a thumbs up. All right, now we need to turn that thumb down. You're going to find the center or the middle of your sphere, and you're going to push down. You don't want to push all the way through. Just get that thumb in there, but we still want it to have a bottom. So we're going to be making pots today and pots do not have a hole through the bottom right we need to have a bottom to put some things in 
So now what we need to do is we need to pinch our thumbs and our pointer fingers. We're going to pinch them together like crabs. And we're going to start to work our way around our sphere, pinching all the way around. And we want to be careful when we're doing this. We want our walls to be thick and sturdy. Otherwise, when the clay starts to dry, it starts to turn to stone, it can fall apart. So you can also, even though my walls are a good size right now, they're thick enough that I know that it won't break when it's turning to stone, I can start to pinch the bottom and inside and kind of opening this up a little bit. Not pinching the sides anymore, but pinching the bottom. And I'm opening my pinch paw up. All right, and there is my pinch paw. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my sponge again in the water, but this time I need to squeeze all that water out. Don't want to make my pot too wet. And you're going to see all those cracks at the bottom and on the rim, on the outside. We need to erase those. We need to clean it up a little bit. So on the top, you can just gently rub your sponge back and forth. And getting rid of all those cracks. You can go on the inside and we're just smoothing that surface out. Sometimes if you have lines or cracks, the edges of them can get really sharp. So when our clay turns to stone, those can hurt a little bit. We want to try and avoid having any sharp edges on our clay. And when you're holding it in your hand, try to hold it really gently. You don't want to push down on the sides that we already made. All right. And when you feel like all of your cracks are hidden, you have your pinch pot. So the next step, one of our last steps for today, we need our kebab stick. And you can see that there is a thicker end and then there's a thinner end, a sharper end. We're gonna use the sharp end today, just almost like a pencil. And what you can do is you can turn your pinch pot over, hold it in your hands and on the bottom, you can either write your initial, you can have a parent help you. So my first name is Shelby and it starts with a C. So I'm gonna make a C. And then my last name is Wade. So I need to make a W for Wade. And those are my initials. You could write your whole name if you'd like. And you can kind of just press down any of those areas that popped up when we carved into it. And notice how I didn't carve all the way through. You can't see it in the bottom. In the pot, you can just see it right there. Now, if you'd like, you can use your, your um, kebab stick again to draw little designs inside or on the outside. So I might do maybe a circle on the inside. And when you are done drawing your shapes and designs, you stopped doing one and you're about to go to the next one, you're gonna have a little bit of clay on the end of that kebab stick. You're just gonna take that off. And you can see my circle. So just very lightly, I'm making lines and designs in there. Taking that extra clay off. And on the outside, you can do some designs too. Maybe you want them to do some line work, some wavy lines. A 
and remember to clean that tip of your kebab stick off. Now, once you're done with your designs, we're going to need to let our clay dry. And right now it's mud, but when it dries, it's going to turn to stone. So it's going to be hard, but it's also going to be fragile. So when it becomes stone, we need to be so careful with the pot. So I'm going to leave it up here to dry. And then usually between 24 to 48 hours is when we can start to paint it with the acrylic paint. All right, so while we're letting our pinch pot dry in a really safe place so it doesn't break, you are gonna wanna squeeze and clean your sponge out in the sink and make sure we get all that clay out. Your kebab sticks are gonna have to go in the um, sink and just get that little bit of clay that's in there and you're gonna to wanna to rinse your cup in the sink. These can go in a spot where you remember for the next time you're gonna use your clay. Your clay, if you have any leftover clay, needs to go back into the Ziploc bag. You need to make sure all the air is squeezed out of there and your it's closed really tightly because if air gets in there, your clay will dry up. All right, and I will see you tomorrow for when we get to all right, so your clay should be dry now <clears throat> and it'll feel really hard like stone. It is really, really fragile, so you have to be so careful with it. I have my water cup. If you haven't gone and filled up your water cup, pause the video and go do that now. We're gonna need our paintbrush and our paint palette. When you're opening up your paint palette, Please do it very carefully. Sometimes if there's air trapped in there, the paint might splatter a little bit. So if you need an adult to help you open it, or if you wanna try, just make sure you're doing it carefully. If you have a smock on or you're wearing, you know, a shirt that's okay to get dirty, that's probably best because you might get paint on it. And today we're using acrylic paint and acrylic paint does stain. So we do wanna be careful with that. So we have our stone pot and I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with red. So I'm just gonna apply the paint right onto that pot. And we might have to do a couple coats. Now, when you're painting, you wanna keep in mind that we're gonna have to let parts of it dry before we can turn it over. If I want to do the bottom, the top has to be dry. Otherwise, it's it might get on the table and start to paint, peel that paint up. Now, if I wanted to use my orange, I need to make sure that I wash my paintbrush before I dip my paintbrush into a different color. If I dip my paintbrush into more colors and I don't wash it, we are going to make brown because when all of the colors are mixed together, they make brown. And we don't want that. We want to keep our nice rainbow. So you're going to hold onto the sides of your water cup and you're gonna just kind of twirl it around in there. If you have a paper towel, you can grab a paper towel and then we like to call this milk the cow when we're cleaning our brush and this means we're going to squeeze out all the water just like you would squeeze all the milk out of a cow's udder so we're going to pinch our fingers like this you're going to squeeze it and make sure you're squeezing those bristles right over your water cup you don't want to get water everywhere so now my paintbrush is clean and i'm ready to choose my next color so i'm going to choose orange and while I'm working on this, I'm going to hold it from the bottom so I can kind of turn it as I go. Another thing I forgot to mention is when you're done washing your brush, make sure it's dried really good so that our clay can, um, we'll just soak that paint. If there's water on it, it's going to make 
the paint not as thick. It'll start to make it really thin and you'll need a few more coats of paint. So make sure that paint brush is all dry. All right, and I'm doing my second layer. All right, and now I'm gonna do my third layer, which is yellow, so I need to wash that brush again. Milk the cow. All right, so I have painted for the most part around my pot, except for that little bottom part, and I painted inside. What I'm gonna do now, I let it dry for a little while and it's not sticky up top, so do a check. When you check, you might peel up a little bit of paint, so you might have to just retouch that up. Make sure it's completely dry and then we can flip it over. And now, if you'd like, you can finish painting the bottom or just doing one last strip around, you don't have to paint the bottom, that's totally up to you. So I'm going to grab my next color, making sure that my paintbrush is completely dry. And I am not gonna paint that bottom part because nobody's gonna see it anyways. So what I need to do is I need to let this dry again completely and then we have one last step. So while I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna clean out my palette. You can put the tops on your palettes, make sure they're clicked on tight so that no paint sneaks out. You can go wash your brush and we're gonna rinse out our water cup. When you wash your brush, you're gonna put your hand out flat like this you're going to put a little bit of soap in the center of your palm. The palm is this part of your hand. And when you have soap on there, you are going to simply just rub your brush back and forth in all that soap. It's almost kind of like you're painting your hand. And why we do that is in our bristles, deep down in there, paint likes to stay in there and hide. And that's what makes our brush have those crazy hair days or Sometimes our brushes get really hard. So we wanna make sure that we clean them out really thoroughly, really good. So you're gonna kind of paint your hand, make sure you're doing this over the sink. And then you can rinse your brush, squeeze out all of the water and let it dry for next time you wanna paint. So I will let you finish painting and then um, we will start to put our sealer on over our paint once it's all done. So our pinch pot is all dry now, which means we're ready for the sealer. So you need your sealer, which is labeled Mod Podge, a paintbrush, and our dry pot. Make sure it is completely dry, otherwise it'll start to move some of our red into the purple and start to mess up some of the colors that we painted on it, and we don't want to do that. So you're going to take your paintbrush and we're gonna dip it into the sealer. And what the sealer is, it's really a mixture of glue and water. And we wanna put this on the clay because it is going to make sure that our paint doesn't chip. We wanna keep these for a really long time. We don't want the paint to start peeling away. So you're just gonna kinda of lightly cover any of the paint on the outside and on the inside. You do not need to put the sealer on the bottom of your pinch pot. You can if you want to. If you choose to put the sealer on the bottom of your pinch pot, you're gonna need this top to completely dry before you can paint that bottom. And we're just making sure that we're moving it around as evenly as possible. And this is actually gonna give a paint a really nice finish. It's gonna feel really smooth when we're all done. And when you're painting the sides, you can kind of hold it and turn it around. You might want to go back 
in to where your thumbs are after you're done holding it. So I'll kind of go all the way around, avoid where my fingers are holding it, and then I can put it down and I can add a little bit where my fingers were. So we need to let this dry completely before we can use it. So we're gonna leave it again in a safe spot, make sure that it doesn't get broken on us. We are gonna put the cap on our Mod Podge if you have some left. You can use more when you make another clay creation. We do need to wash our brush out because there is glue in there and it's gonna stick those brushes together. So again, you're gonna to wanna to take a little bit of soap right in the middle of your hand and over the sink, we're gonna to wanna to wipe our brush back and forth and kind of almost like you're painting your hand and then rinse your brush. Make sure you dry it really well and then put it in a spot for you to use again. So I can't wait to see your clay creations. You can have your parents email them to me or post them on social media and tag the studio. I'd love to see what you've made. So thank you for joining me. Thank you.